Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at Kite, a cooperative real-time game where you and the other players try to keep several sand timers from running out all at the same time. And disclaimer that I was sent a review copy of this one. Real-time games can be a bit hit or miss for me. How well does Kites fly above the pack? Let's find out and get to the list. To start with my number five point, which is a mix, is the challenge cards that come with the game. You can add any number of these 12 cards in three varieties to the deck of cards to add some extra chaos. You've got storms, which force you to flip every single sand timer, airplanes that prevent communication for a little while, and cross lines that force the players to trade cards with each other. And the positive or negative here, like a lot of things with this game, is going to depend a bit on your group. The chaos and the additional challenge of these cards is going to be great for uh, players who don't mind a little bit of craziness in their game. But other players will find it frustrating, will find the additional challenge unnecessary, will find it hard to remember what the effect of each of the cards is, especially if using multiple ones. So it uh, might work for some groups and not others, but I'm glad they have the option at least to include it in the game. My number four point is related to number five, although it's a full-on pro in this case, and that's the ability to scale the difficulty of the game. I already mentioned that the challenge cards will make things more interesting, especially if you add a bunch of them. But on the other side of things, a really nice choice they made to make the game easier, especially when you're learning the game, I use this for my kids when I taught them, is that you can remove one or even two of the sand timers in all the relevant cards of the deck. And with fewer cards, that makes the game play faster, makes it easier to get through. And as you can imagine, it's much easier to manage four sand timers and keep them from running out instead of six. This warm-up mode is not something I would suggest after you've played it a couple of times just to kind of get into the game, but it's a great way to uh, teach it and make things a little bit simpler. The only annoyance for both uh, warm-up and challenge cards is uh, taking cards out of the deck and adding them back in. It's just a little bit of a fiddly setup when you're trying to set up for different difficulty levels. My number three is also a pro, and that's the sort of final rush moment in each game of kites. So you've got the five hourglasses that are turned by different cards. Then you've got the white hourglass, which is wild, and any single card value can turn it. But once the draw deck runs out and players are just trying to get rid of all the cards remaining in their hand, the white timer can no longer be flipped. So you have a strict amount of time left before the game will end, which forces players to just play cards as fast as they can in a really frantic, kind of exciting way. And I think this is great. It makes uh, every single game of kites, well, unless you lose early, makes every winning game of kites uh, exciting at the end. You never have sort of an anticlimactic finish. You're always going to be rushing for that final card before uh, white runs out. But for my number two point, I'm back to a mix, and that's the cooperation between players in the game. On the positive side, although the game is very frantic and it's hard to coordinate in a detailed way, every player can see which sand timers are close to running out. So they can kind of shout out like, play a red, play a purple, play a blue. And uh, <laughs> that little like kind of minimal cooperation is still pretty exciting and does force the players to work as a team. But on the negative side, first of all, if you're looking for a game with really like detailed strategic cooperation, clearly Kites is not going to offer that. And also there's certainly the possibility of negative experiences here. Players blaming players because they played the wrong card and flipped something that was full to being empty and losing the game for them. Um, an alpha player kind of shouting out which colors people should play at all times and just being annoying with that. That's going to be very group dependent, but there's certainly the possibility here as in most other real-time games. My final point is a pro, and that's the sand timers themselves. Just the entire concept of the game I really enjoy. The idea that, sort of thematically like kites, in that you need to sort of carefully keep them in the air, I think that's what they were going for. Trying to keep all of these hourglasses going at the same time and flipping them so that they never turn over for a real-time game, for a tension-filled experience, which, you know, if you're buying a real-time game, hopefully that's what you're in for. I think this is a great innovation that really adds a lot of fun and excitement to the game. Overall, I can recommend Kites if you like chaotic real-time games with some cooperation, but nothing too deep or strategic. A good comparison, I would say, is the five-minute series, five-minute dungeons, five-minute mystery, five-minute Marvel. On the other hand, if you don't like chaos, if you don't like stress, if you're looking for a more strategic or tactical experience, I don't think this is really going to uh, check off any of those boxes. It's very much a fun, chaotic, real-time filler. Thanks for watching, good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.